Good morning, YouTube pipe community. The real Batman here. Guess what? I'm going to do a video on this morning. Well, if you're looking at all this mess on my desk, you might have an idea. Smyrna, Long Cut Parade, uh, Black Cavendish. Latakia, Red Virginia Cavendish, and what says White Burley. How did I get two of them? Uh, Turkish Ribbon, the Turkish Ribbon. Did I already say Parik? Parik. Yeah, there it is, right there. Smyrna, not Smyrna, Georgia, Smyrna Tobacco, uh, Straight Virginia, and some Burley and some other stuff, and a uh, big bag of different kinds of Turkish tobacco. So, yeah, you guessed it. I'm going to do some blending this morning and a little tour around my pipe tobacco room. This is my pipe collection. That's my broadband router. There's old Prince Albert. Yeah, I got that a few years ago. All those froggy cans. Yeah, the frog got out of the can a long time ago. Those are just very... The, all these cans are empty. Some of them have uh, some of my blends in it where I've wanted to taste some of my blends uh, that I have cellared up and I brought them to taste. And uh, so that's what that is. I'm telling you, I got... Blended tobacco I have made just sitting all over the freaking place. Oh, well, here's some stuff I did get in recently that's not my blend. Now, this I have never tasted before. Ooh, Dunhill London mixture. Now, this is an English style. Yep. And I just opened this up yesterday. Black Shag, 221 B Street. If you know what 221 B Street stands for, uh, you're pretty smart. Anyway, this is a good tobacco. It's very fine cut. They call it shag cut. And it burns quite well. Just good enough for Holmes and sometimes Watson, I suppose. Another English, Golden Age by Sutliff. Uh, what is this one? What is it? Oh, Berkshire, another English blend. I guess you could say I like English blends, because I do. Good old The Country Doctor, C&D. Yep. It has uh, mostly Burley and uh, Parique in it. That's about every... Uh, that's about all it's got in it. I mean, it might have another ingredient. Uh, I already did a video review of this. Anyway, it's empty, except I put some of my blend in it. Uh, Haddo's Delight by Peas. It's a decent blend. Anyway, I'm not here to review blends this morning. This is uh, one of my humidors. I keep some of my pressed tobacco in. I just did this one. Um, I just got it out. This was this is five ounces of tobacco pressed down into quarter of an inch. This one I did a little different. I took a cap full of port wine, poured down the middle, pressed it in my press. Brought it out. I haven't tasted it. Yeah, I did. I, I smoked a little bit of it the other day. It is great. It burns uh, fantastic to a white ash. 
and some good old Peterson's Irish Flake. Yep. This is just one of my blends right here. Another one of my blends right here. It says Latakia, but it ain't. I just use the bags for storing my stuff in. And these are humidors that once held some good cigars. It's an English blend I got stored in here now. Of course, I do not make any aromatics. Uh, for all you aromatic fans out there, I'm sorry. I just don't dig aromatics. This is another fine English blend in here. And this humidor. And guess what's in this humidor? You got it. Oh, boy. Yep, English. Uh, there's my flag that stood at a camp overseas in that camp. These are my cellared tobaccos over here now this one is these are two ro some the top row is two rows deep it's not lighting very well in there but anyway you can take my word on it it's two rows deep this one's two or three rows deep in tobacco jars uh of all my various blends that one the bottom cabinet, I store extra tobacco and pipe socks and all that kind of crap in. And this, of course, is the press I use for pressing tobacco. And uh, this is my large, uh, what, what do you want to call it? Anyway, I made this out of oak wood with stainless steel screw bolts and this is what I use to press tobacco in and I made another one a smaller one that will make a smaller brick made out of the same thing and uh, I'm going to press some tobacco in this one this one will make about a 3 by 3 inch uh, block of tobacco probably hold about two ounces in it the big one will hold five or six ounces press down to a minuscule amount okay all right anyway blending 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 okay so what what do we do when we blend well i gotta find a place to put this camera because i can't do it and hold it so i hope this will work on this spot right there. Put, shine a little light on it. If I can get this light, light to stay. Now I'm gonna use this, this is one of my plastic uh, containers I use to blend in. And I put everything in there and blend with it and then I store it in there for a little while. Okay, so what you wanna do, or what I do when I blend, I decide what kind of flavor profile I want. You know, do you want an English style blend, uh, what I call an American blend, a Scottish style blend? To me, the only difference between the English and the Scottish style blend is the addition of Cavendish and uh, maybe a little burley and different proportions in it. That's Scottish style. Okay. I don't know what a... Yeah, Irish style has got liquor in it. Heck! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so what you want to do... Uh, you take uh, some straight blend, whatever it is you're, you're making, like a base tobacco, Virginia, Burley, or Virginia and Burley, right? And you want to start out with... Uh, I don't know, that, that's about a quarter of an ounce right there. 
because believe me, by the time you get done, it'll make a lot, depending on the addition of how much tobacco components you're going to put in. Of course, the more components you put in, the more you're going to end up with, okay? Okay, so I, I'm going to add a pinch of Turkish ribbon to that. When I say a pinch, for that amount, a pinch. Pinch of Turkish. Okay. This is like cooking. To me, it's like cooking. <laughs> Ooh, let's add a little Smyrna. Smyrna, Smyrna. Ooh, maybe a pinch and a half to it. There you go. Now we're gonna give it some uh, a, a boost up its flavor profile a little bit with some red Cavendish, Virginia Cavendish. There we go. Maybe a little bit more than that. There we go. What you gotta be careful with when you're adding other profiles to it you don't want to overshadow your base um, tobacco with additions of other tobaccos. Unless that's how you want it to turn out. You don't want it to be taste like uh, necessarily an oriental tobacco, but you want an oriental tobacco in the background. Those of you who cook in the kitchen uh, you basically do the same thing on the stove that you're doing right here. This is cooking without fire. You're doing the same thing. Let's say you got a favorite recipe you're doing, pow, right there. And then you're putting your salt, pepper, and all your other spices into it. Now this is white burley. This is a, a very uh, sweet tobacco to add to it. Most of these are low in nicotine. Okay, now I'm going to add some Cavendish, black Cavendish to this uh, to give it, yeah, more of an interesting flavor. And Cavendish will actually take some of the tobacco and... Uh, give it a a, a a different flavor profile depend you like I say depends on how much Cavendish you're adding to it uh, you can change the flavor profile a lot with uh, some Cavendish now this is not cased Cavendish or vanilla or strawberry or watermelon this is just plain old black Cavendish okay now uh, this is Latakia. Some of you hate it. Some of you love it. Now this is about as much as I started with. Uh, with the base uh, Virginia tobacco. So I'm going to add about that much Latakia to it. Because I like Latakia. Now you can leave it out. Add a pinch to it. Or however much light of key you like. When you're making your own blend, you can do it your way. Yep, you can do it your way. Now this is Perique. Perique adds different flavors to a tobacco. If you open the Perique up and smell it, oh my gosh, it smells like figs, raisins, all kind of old fruit, dirt. Uh, and what Perique will do... Uh, I don't like to necessarily bring the Perique flavor profile to the front, but Perique, uh, now this is long Perique. It's hard to blend like that. So I take scissors and cut it up before I, I drop it in my blend. Uh, what Perique does, it'll kind of take the flavors and it'll take the tongue bite out. Uh, it'll smooth the tobacco profile out. It's kind of like a magic tobacco to me. It's magic. Ooh, look at that parade. 
Now, those of you who know how Perique is made can appreciate why it costs as much as it does. Uh, it's only grown in one place, and that's in Louisiana, South Louisiana, in one parish. And, uh, ooh, look at that stem. And uh, they harvest the tobacco, age it out, put it in a barrel, and press it down, put it under pressure in a tobacco. I mean, it's like a whiskey barrel. And they leave it there for about a year, and it will turn black. Tobacco juices start coming up. And I mean, they adjust the pressure throughout, you know, put more pressure on it. And uh, when it's right, boy, it comes out different than it went in. And that's what gives it this nice profile, that aging under pressure. It's a very unique tobacco. I understand that they got this idea from the Indians in the area. The tobacco. I don't know who came up with putting it under pressure. I have no idea, but it was a good idea. But this is a unique tobacco, the, the type of tobacco uh, that they use for this process. Now, this is, that's it. That's my blend right there. You want to mix it up now? Do you want to smoke it right now? Nope, you don't. Why? Because none of the tobaccos has married. The flavors of each tobacco have not intermingled with one another. Now you see that little bit I started out with? Now look at this. Look how much we have in there. That That's a pretty good bit. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do, since that's a small amount, I'm looking for a, dang it, an empty bag to put it in. Well, anyway, I'll do that after the video. I can't find one right now. So, we're going to take this and put it in a plastic bag. And uh, I'm going to put the bag under pressure. Maybe put a brick on it or some weight and leave it for at least a week. And then take it out, put it back in there, air it out, turn it around, all that kind of, then smoke some and see how it tastes. Then at that time, I can adjust the flavor profile. Okay, well, I hope y'all have enjoyed this video. I hope it's informative and interesting to some of you and if you got any questions or comments just leave them below and uh you can always email me ask me questions or whatever and i appreciate y'all watching and uh thank you for watching today on uh the real batman's blending lesson today and y'all have a good one and y'all take care keep them lit the real Batman and Gizmo, which he's down there sleeping. See y'all later. Take care.